have a dual folks here pull Marcus on two two five numbers after the name a little games beaten and now we're starting to get to to the games that I beat over here. I think all of October, pretty much all of October are games that I beat when I was in the motherland, when I was on vacation, man. And it's mainly four games. I beat, I beat the first three Metal Slugs, and then I beat Mario plus uh, plus Rabbids, Kingdom Battle, or whatever like it's called, whatever the official name of it is. Uh, I, I, I'm walking through it, man. My history with this game is very common of most people's history of the game. We all saw kind of the leaks uh, before like the game was announced at E3. And I looked at it, and I was like, this is stupid. Because I, I don't know anybody that likes the Rapids. I don't know. I, I, I just don't. I don't even know what there is to like about them. They're kind of like bootlegged minions. And I, I don't really like the minions, so I definitely don't like the Rabbits. And although Mario was involved with it, since it was a Ubisoft thing, I was like, ah, this is... I was like, it, it looked like a cheap cash. And, and then we saw in, uh, uh, at E3, you know, the uh, Miyamoto called out, like, the director of the game, or, like, lead producer or whatever. Not called out, but, like, you know... Uh, he got like emotional about it because Miyamoto came out to present his game. When Miyamoto came out to present the game, I knew something was up. Cause I was like, "Hold up, this dude just don't come out for like some nonsense or whatever." And he kind of explained the story. If he told the guys like, "Hey, you can make a Mario game, just can't jump. He can only jump in my game." Uh, so that was you know pretty cool and all that jazz. And then we actually saw the game. And outside of like the open kind of not open world, but the the the, the walk behind the Roomba thing in the open areas from stage to stage, that part I'm still a little bit confused about, but everything else seemed to fall into a XCOM, right? Like, that's kind of what, like, what it looked like. I was like, oh, this is XCOM, like an easier, different version of it. And I like to caution with that, because I bought the game, first of two things. It timed out perfectly. It came out literally a day or two before I went back to the motherland. And secondly, I looked at it, and I was like, you know what? I, I get down with, like, an easy XCOM. Like, I love XCOM. And I'd like a game that would kind of challenge me as well, but not like that crazy. And this game, it's got the different tiers of difficulty. Uh, the, the main stages are pretty, I wouldn't say easy, because I did die like a couple times in the end where I had to like restart it or whatnot. But they're, 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 they're easier than XCOM stages, let's put it that way. One thing that makes them easier too is, unless you're not playing with like one man army or one man, whatever the hell it is in XCOM, where like when someone dies, he dies. <laughs> if he dies, he dies. Uh, in this game, like, you don't have to worry about that. Like, Mario's never gonna, like, really die. You'll lose the battle or whatnot, but he'll be alive. Like, you don't lose, like, the character or whatnot. So that kind of in itself makes it already heavily easier. Uh, then there's, like, the challenge stages afterwards, which some kind of require you to do specific things, which that could be a little bit of a challenge. And then there's the ultimate challenge stages, which I've actually only beaten, I think, one out of three or one out of four. And I almost beat another one, but yeah, like those things are long. Like I'm talking, like one of them was like I was two hours into it, and ended up losing. And I was just like heartbroken and stuff. But it was cool. It was cool to have like an experience like that in a game like this. Uh, I'm gonna end up giving this game at like an 8.75, man. I mean, it's really good. I, I would have appreciated maybe if there was like another world, maybe because I felt like some character you unlock characters as you go along the way. And one of the last characters you get, or the last character you get, is Yoshi. And I never really gave him a fair shot just because I got him so far in now. They do a lot of smart things uh, with the experience points. Everyone kind of has them, so when you unlock a character, you kind of fill out a skill tree. You can reset your skill tree at any point, so you can try different things out because there aren't enough skills to, f to fill up everything, even though you can come pretty close to it. Uh, but the, the main difference between the mechanics of the game, it's a cover-based shooter in the sense that you're moving from cover to cover, but you could also attack in movement, which is something you can't do in XCOM. And I'll be curious to see if XCOM kind of rips off that idea, whereas I think this game ripped off a lot of XCOM, I'll be curious to see what XCOM could steal away from this game. But this is a really good Switch title if you're into strategy games.